So in the previous tutorial, we arrived with this answer as our units of measurement when we converted between hectoliters, I'm sorry, deciliters and nanoliters. So that was conversion between one prefix or unit and another. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the number we obtained and we're going to express it in a different way. So we're not changing the units at all. All we're doing is finding a new way to represent this number that's a little more streamlined and easier to write. We're going to use scientific notation. Scientific notation is about simplifying the number while still maintaining the integrity of that number. In other words, I want to always know that I have 283 million. I don't want this to turn into 200 million or 300 million. I want to know that it's 283 million. So there are some rules regarding scientific notation. Now we're not going to be working with significant digits in this course. So instead, what you're going to do is you're going to represent any non-zero numbers or any zeros that are between two or more non-zero numbers. And I'll show you how to do that. So we're going to convert this number here into scientific notation. I'm going to rewrite it up here, so I'll have some space to write out the rules. Okay, so first and foremost, the number you generate in scientific notation should always, in terms of this course, follow this particular format. Okay. These dots here represent that you can have more numbers than just three after the decimal. Okay. So these dots mean you can have however many numbers you need to after the decimal. This number here to the left of the decimal in the ones place must be between 1 and 9. In other words, it has to be greater than 0 but less than 10. So it's greater than 0 but less than 10. So it needs to be a single digit number between 1 and 9, which also means it's going to be greater than 0, but less than 10. Okay. The numbers that follow the decimal, for all intents and purposes of this class, these numbers should be non-zero numbers. However, if there is a 0 between two non-zero numbers, that zero still remains as well. In other words, if the number I have is 1.234, all three of these numbers that follow that decimal are non-zero numbers, so I keep them when I convert to scientific notation. If it was 1 1.204, I will keep that zero as well because it exists between two non-zero numbers. Okay. If the number were 1.2004, I would still keep those zeros because, again, they're between two non-zero numbers. However, if the number were 1.2000, unless otherwise specified, I can ignore these zeros. Okay. I don't need to write them. I can just write 1.2. All right, so that's the rules that pertain to these spaces here. Finally, your number, when you convert it to this form, is going to be multiplied by a base 10 to some exponent. This exponent can be either positive or negative, and we'll talk about when it's one or the other. A positive exponent signifies that you started with a large number. So if you start with a large number, you should be looking for a positive exponent when you convert to scientific notation. A negative exponent denotes that you started 
with a small number. So you should be looking for a negative exponent if the number you started with was really, really small. Okay? So those are the rules. Now let's apply them. Two hundred eighty-three million nanometers. So this is going to look similar to what we did in the visual way of converting metric units. What I'm going to do is I'm going to locate the decimal point in my number. So there it is. And I'm going to move it through the number until I get a number that is between 0 and 10. Greater than 0, less than 10 between 1 and 9. Here we go. Now, a lot of people might stop here because they say, well, 3 is between 1 and 9. But remember that you still also have the 2 and the 8 in front of that 3, making this number 283, which is much larger than 9 and over 10. So I have to keep moving. That's still 28.3. If I move it one more, now I'm at 2.83. Okay, so my number is 2.83. But remember, this number is going to be multiplied by 10 to some exponent. Okay, the way I determine my exponent is I count the number of pumps that I obtained when I moved my decimal. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 10 to the 8th. Now the question is, is it a positive 8 or a negative 8? Remember I told you, if you start with a big number, okay, you're going to have a positive exponent. If you start with a small number, you're going to have a negative exponent. Okay. What I really should have said were two things. First and foremost, if you move the decimal left, your exponent will be positive. If you move the decimal right, your exponent will be negative. If you start with a number that is less than 1, so if your number is less than 1, you're going to have a negative exponent. If the number you start with is greater than 9, you're going to have a positive exponent. If the number you start with is between 1 and 9, your exponent is going to be 0. Okay. So because I moved the decimal to the left and because the number I started with was greater than 9, I leave it as positive. And my answer is 2.83 times 10 to the 8. And remember, we haven't changed units, so this is still nanoliters. Okay, so let's try two more examples, and that will conclude scientific notation. Okay, so for this example, let's try 0 0.00000682, and we'll do micrograms. So remember, we're going to move our decimal until we get a number between 1 and 9. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is between 1 and 9, so we stop. So we have 6.82 times 10 to okay, some power, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We moved it six spaces. And now the question is, is it positive or negative? Well, again, if you go by my rules, we move the decimal to the right, so that tells us it's negative. And also, 0 0.00000682 is smaller than 1. It's less than 1, which means it's going to be a negative exponent. So our final answer is 6.82 times 10 to the negative 6 micrograms. Okay. So this is much easier, I think, than the conversions we were doing between one subunit and another because it really is just pushing the decimal 
setting the number up appropriately, and then making sure your exponent has the correct sign in front of it, positive or negative. So one more example, and we'll be done with scientific notation. So 2,382.61 decimeters. Okay, now the last two examples I've given you have been numbers that either have a lot of zeros leading up to the zero in the ones place, or a very large number that had the decimal after the ones place with no other numbers other than zeros following. This one's a little trickier because I've got non-zero numbers on both sides of the decimal, but the same rules apply. I'm trying to get to a number between 1 and 9. If I move this way, my number is going to get larger, and it's already larger than 9. So I need to move to the left. So we go 1, 2, 3, giving me 2.38261 times 10. I moved it 1, 2, 3 spaces. So to the third, I moved it to the left. And the number I started with was greater than 9, so it's going to be positive. And I keep my original units of measurement. So that's all there is to it.